And welcome back to episode five of Range Days, number five. My name is Dan Edwards. With me is Josh Babbitt. Uh, Josh, thanks and welcome to another great episode. This time talking about Tour Edge Exotics EXS driver. We are talking about EXS, and it's a uh, one of the more unique offerings this year. I'm looking forward to jumping right into it. Yeah, a great profile with the black and uh, what I oftentimes like to call Canon and blue, which is basically any blue. I see um, you're showing off the uh, the nice subtle outer profiles to it. The one thing I want to talk about straight out of the gate, Josh, and this is something I think is well represented in exotics overall over the last couple of iterations they've had is Slipstream Soul. Which is what I'm kind of pointing at here. And, you know, we have a, a, a really good video up on this channel. Um, I'll link to it, but if you're watching it on a TV, that won't be there. With David Glad, the president of Tor Edge Exotics, talking about the Slipstream Soul and what it does. And I, I'd rather refer you to that than kind of change his words a little bit. But suffice it to say on a driver, unless you're playing driver off the deck, it is going to be more an aesthetics thing than it is an actual functioning thing. There'll be some use to it, but in general, it's more aesthetics on the driver to have a matching line. But in all honesty, it looks pretty good. Before we jump to more tech, I think one of the things we do have to talk about with a driver like this is price. It's coming in at $299, and I'm going to kind of run through some tech, and hopefully Dan will cut me off and explain some of the stuff I'm talking about. But... You know, you do get movable weights. You do get an adjustable hosel where you change shafts, change loft, things like that. You do get a carbon fiber crown. You do get car what they have, dual carbon tech is what they call it. But in reality, it's more carbon placement. You can see this through the screen. I'm sure you can. Where, again, composite materials used to remove weight. And for those new to our channel or who haven't seen it, using something like a composite crown can save upwards of 30 grams even over a titanium crown uh, where they can take that weight, shift it low. You always want your weight below the ball and back if you're looking for high MOI, but really in general, just low. And then wherever you want to have it placed that way, whether it's for draw bias, uh, fade bias, whatever it else, it's a way to manipulate weight. So again, composite crown, composite on the, uh, more on the so uh, soles near the toe adjustability both from weight and from hosel and you're getting it in a package that costs under three hundred dollars it's kind of remarkable you talk about the price um and usually that comes with a reason when i look at a club that has three weights i can move across the head when i look at the adjustability that's available and i look at uh, multiple materials being put together in different parts of the head such as the carbon profile to me, it seems like the bang for the buck here, just just on paper, is pretty significant for anyone taking a taking a chance or, or have taken a deeper dive into Tour Edge and what they have available. I, I would agree with you. And one of the things that's rather unique is Tour Edge as a company really has two brands. They have the Tour Edge brand and the Tour Edge Exotics brand. The Exotics brand's always been a high priced, uh, higher premium, using top notch materials, which this does top-notch shafts, which this does. Uh, they don't always have the most shaft offerings, but that's okay. It's available at fitting centers where you can get fit for it. And it's all done at a package at a reduced price. When we asked David Glaude, the president of it, his answer was rather simple. We have to. If they want to sell product, they have to be aggressive. And once people try the product, they'll understand what they're talking about. And I, we were pretty blown away by it. We're not going to spoil all the fun because we dissect data here, but you know, it was it definitely held up to everything else we try yeah what's great uh, also about the company is they have multiple drivers that are at exceptional price points this isn't the only driver they offer in a price point that would surprise a lot of golfers that's correct the hot launch 3 hl3 as it's known i, I want to say it comes in at 199 dollars with some solid bells and whistles and it'll be shipped in 48 hours if you go order one uh, specifically it's pretty impressive yeah uh I think it's a pretty solid lead in there. There is some other tech going on that we could either touch on or just jump into the range. I know a lot of people are familiar with the idea of a bulging roll and the roll face that there is in here, uh, as well as a variable face thickness that I think is pretty common now in the industry and expectations on a driver head. I would agree. So I think best thing to do is head to the, uh, head to the bay and see what I can do with this thing. What do you think? Sounds good to me. All right, let's go all 
Yeah, we're back. Uh, <laughs> nice little windmill finish. It seems to be my signature in these range days. My last shot is always the uh, the, the worst of the bunch. Uh, I think they're going to know which one was the worst. And for those that follow <laughs> this, these shows, they know we talk about the best and the worst. In this case, we're not doing a comparison. We're talking about one product. Yeah. So we have five shots, and we're going to dive right through. I will say, uh, you hit this one, uh, one of the first drivers you hit of the day, and there were a couple of balls there that you very much pummeled. Yeah, it it it, uh, it was very representative on the head. Obviously, I got some good feedback, especially on that last drive. Uh, you know, as as you get away from the center, but for the most part, I thought I thought it was uh, very very impressionable. I'm making up words every every episode we do is impressionable. Okay, well, word. Impressionable actually is a word. Okay, so we'll take it. Really fit with it. What you were it, saying, it provides uh, an impression on as to how you hit it uh, each shot you take, and and I think that's one of the most important things. Uh, when it comes to a driver head is knowing the quality of the strike over kind of having to guess whether you hit it well or not. Um, that That's very good. I mean, feedback is really important, and we hear about that a lot in the irons and wedges and not as much with drivers. But this one offered some pretty good feedback, a little change in sound depending on impact. But overall, before we jump right into the data, I want to talk about the sound. The driver sounds fantastic. Uh, it's got a sound similar to a lot of the drivers with composite heads, but it does offer a little bit more of a ting without being loud at all. Dan remarked, although he doesn't remember, um, that it was one of his favorite sounding drivers. And also when you're setting up to it, it looks really good. Met uh, metallic crown, carbon fiber weave that's kind of hidden a little bit, but you can see it in the light. Just a really good looking driver. Yeah, nice simplified profile with a, a little, uh, hitting on a lot of the marks that I think people look for when they they want to stand up and and present a ball to a driver head um probably a good time to go into the actual strikes themselves now that we've allowed some time to view the five shots i did hit and we'll just go we're going to go straight down the line here josh i'm not going to be picky on what we uh what we start with what we end with it looks like quite a few stats here if people see me looking to the right they're right on my monitor in front of me over here well the great thing is they're looking there as well so it's kind of a team effort so what i like to see here is it is fairly close to the center on all five strikes. Uh, there were some misses, and, and I noticed that I was a little bit on the heel on quite a few of them. But one thing I really like, Josh, is I'm still on that out-to-end target that we've seen in the past for me, but my ability to bring the head into the zone and close it down to the, the path that I'm trying to take was actually pretty good with exotics. I found it quite easy, and you'll see that with a two degrees face open off a four-degree target, so I'm actually closing it down a little bit, which is perfect. Yeah, and one of the things you remarked that I made notes on were picking it right up and taking swings and, and centering the club right away. You didn't f struggle at all, as you said, finding the center. But one of the things that's been talked about is the spin profile of this driver, and we're going to see it as we progress through these. It's not a high spin driver. You're a high spin guy. And if somebody is going to jump in here and see 2,900 right off the bat, they're going to be like, whoa, that's not for me. But... We hit drives, drivers that had more spin than this, and we hit drivers that had less. And I, and I want to put that out right away, that this is definitely not a high spin head. And David Glad said originally in his video, again, you can reference that on our channel here, that it's not the lowest of the low. It's certainly not even to the mid category. It fits right into the biggest bell curve of golfers. Yeah, a another worthy point to note before we continue on looking at club data here, we did hit everything with stock shafts. I if, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but I believe that Tensai Blue is the stock shaft that we hit in this one. Probably correct. 65 grams stiff uh, with the Callaway ERC golf ball. Yes. Um, and yeah, like you said, obviously I don't I don't have any problems creating spin on a driver head based on the way I swing the ball. Uh, this certainly isn't the lowest we saw, but it most definitely isn't the highest. Did uh, you just but, say swing the ball? Is that what I said? I think you did. Wow. I just know we have four more slides to go, and I'm I'm so excited to, to keep it going. Um, that's pretty funny. Let's uh, before before I make something else up, let's go to the next slide and look at another uh, another another shot. We've got a couple arrows pointing at some of the more interesting elements. Obviously, this yeah. one is one of my best strikes on the head itself, uh, and that's represented with the efficiency. I believe 1.45 is about as good as you can do. Uh, yeah, 1.45, 1.46 with the uh, monitors we use. You centered this one really well. It did exactly what you wanted. 
everything about this shot is what golfers should look for is a club that's going to go exactly where you aim it yeah i I did notice that i didn't shut the face down as much on this and uh that certainly increased the side spin a bit which increased the total spin uh but at the end of the day yeah but at the end of the day we're still with a stock shaft in that you know 20 26 to 2700 range when i'm you know in terms of backspin and not side spin and and quite frankly as a higher spin guy that puts this club into a lot of golfers hands uh, as a viable option i would agree with you and i think that coming back to that is fitting will tell a story for a lot of golfers and if they're not a fitting person and there's a lot of golfers that aren't go and, t- and try it out because you will find that you might be in that bell curve of this is the perfect thing for you yeah let's uh let's keep going uh to shot three once again, really high in that efficiency, although we did move down on the face a little bit. Uh, the one thing I thought was interesting, Josh, is the spin stayed quite a bit the same despite being lower on the head. That This was one of the ones that stood out to me when we were going through all the data is normally, again, for those who have followed us, you go low, you're going to increase spin, increase speed, and lower launch. Launch took care of itself. It did lower a little bit. Spin went up a tiny bit. I mean, we're talking very not even noticeable and yet still going seven millimeters low that says that we have a pretty forgiving face as you move down which is a good thing you know there's obviously going to be speed in that area yeah yeah that's that's certainly the take and and i'll just send it right into the next uh screen cap which i believe is one of my least impressive of the bunch uh in terms of close to center uh high in the toe representative to the other shots and we saw quite a bit less spin overall um but at the same time that efficiency is still right up in that 1.4 range which is excellent in my books yeah that's this is again this these two shots are kind of show us what a club can do and when you miss high obviously higher launch which we see 14 here versus 10 in the last one a little less speed which we see not a lot though and a lot less spin which we see what was surprising here is the speed didn't go down. So as you went lower, you're going to get a little more speed, like Dan showed on the last one. As you go higher, you're usually going to use, lose quite a bit of speed. Not the case here. This is one of those ones where for years people called it the hot spot of the driver, so to speak, when it was really a not a lot of speed loss, but a lot of spin loss, which made everybody think that's where you wanted to hit it because it would go farther. This one just showed that he took some of that spin away, how far it would go. But the speed stayed up, which is great to see. Yeah, and I love this uh, this new sort of trend we're seeing with a lot of drivers that are maintaining that that overall forgiveness while allowing golfers to get a little bit more creative as to where they're going to hit on the head. Now, I'm not claiming I tried to hit it up there, but at the end of the day, there was a time when I had to hit it up there to, to get a real valuable uh, amount of distance out of my carry. Uh, at this point, I'm up there, you know, as a benefit uh, both in spin and carry but at the same time i'm not losing on accuracy and i'm not i'm not worried about hitting there every time i have the ability to move around this face a little bit more as you're showing um 10 years ago your ball mark which they won't see despite us shooting this in 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 hd they're not going to see these ball marks which are disgusting by the way (laughs) um about the size of a ball mark was where you could live right now you look at the score lines here, which again, score lines on drivers don't mean anything. You can pretty much go anywhere in here and you're going to get a quality golf shot path dependent as this driver showed. Yeah. Uh, and this is probably my least favorite part, Josh. I know we're going to uh, the last slide of the drives, which I was clearly unhappy with in the, in the video we show. Yeah. Um, I think most people, when you say things like that, like you less, <laughs> probably like well, you more which we know isn't true. But. At, at, at the end of the day, we're eight millimeters towards the heel and 12 millimeters low, which is, which is a fairly significant miss, especially down on a driver head. Uh, yes. But at the same time, the efficiency is still above 1.4 and the spin Josh is only 3057. Like, yeah, uh, it's again, this driver has really showed how forgiving, at least in the spin department, it was not the lowest spin certainly not the highest but the range in which it doesn't change depending on where you strike it on the face was really impressive now we talk about forgiveness in a driver and the the kind of person uh, the the type of golfer that should be pursuing 
different drivers that are available obviously i i look at exotics and i say i know i'm not sure there are too many golfers that wouldn't benefit from at least trying this let alone really giving it a good look for their bag especially if accuracies uh, and efficiency maintained efficiency across the face is their primary goal and to throw in that that one that sticks out quite a bit which is budget yeah but oh uh, yeah price i mean you're 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 paying for fairways it looks like I, uh, i'm gonna flip the script on you and ask you a non-data okay. question sure. in regards to a driver like this yeah you're on 400 committees at your golf course uh, i'm on a couple golf. yeah 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 your golf course is filled with golfers who buy golf equipment generally if you are talking to them and they're not the nerds like you and I are about golf equipment and you talk to them about this driver, or let's say you don't talk to them about this driver and they go into a golf store and they see Torridge Exotics sitting there and it's two ninety nine, dollars is this no longer competing with the current market? Is it competing with last year's drivers? Do they assume that it's an older driver? Yeah, that's a really hard question. Uh I'm I'm fortunate to belong to a club that has a number of demo days available, a number of demo options available in the pro shop on a regular basis. That not a lot of them are are uh, big box retail shoppers where they line up ten drivers based on price or quality or what they saw on TV uh, and make a purchase based on that. So to that end, I d- I don't know that I would have a perfect answer, but I think we've seen on the THP community conversation i think we've seen kind of a comprehension here especially when uh, thp has the opportunity to engage with tour edge that they are doing things a little bit differently up there and and um, up there in illinois and trying to open doors for people i think to to spend a fair amount of money to get a fair product and then that i i tend to say even though I'm, like he's called me a nerd already I tend to say that they It was endearing. Yeah, obviously. I, I, I tend to look at it like they're they're a little bit more connected with the idea of getting their product in people's hands and, and knowing that um uh, that price might be the best way of doing it. I Josh, let me kick that back to you. I don't know. I'm I'm kinda stumped by that based on yeah, everything. I we've don't seen. know the answer either. I think, you know, they're they're trying to do a good job with the messaging. I don't know why I picked this up again. It's not I mean I can show it to you again. <laughs> look at that three D modeling. Um, I, I don't know. They're trying to do and they're doing a good job with the messaging. I saw an advertisement on Golf Channel, which you didn't see in the past. It's in it's getting in the hands of, you know, social media people, or at least they're trying it because people are posting about it. And I've received a dozen questions about it in the last seven days. Now, I say that we did just do a March Madness contest with them and we gave a few away. But this the, the questions I got as far as the driver goes, weren't about that. They were about the technology or the performance of it. So I was genuinely curious. And yeah. I'd love to pose that question to our our people who view this is, if a driver is priced at almost half of what other options are, is it immediately viewed as inferior? And if it's not, is it compared to the current product or is it compared to last year's model? Give us your answer down there. Not on Dan's head, but yeah. down there. In the comment section would be excellent. And we also have... Uh uh an an awesome online community of golfers who uh, are very much hackers alike and will more than likely be having a conversation about this head and, and this sort of uh focus that we brought in into this video uh, if you want to join up there www.thehackersparadise.com and you'll be able to sign up for the the forums the community there uh, josh i i know we've been sitting on the last image which uh, yeah, I'm happy to get rid of it. But I think as we talk about apples to apples against other uh, uh, competitors, I think one of the best things to do here is look at my downrange data. Because while yes. while you can focus on spin, launch, uh, you know, efficiency, at the end of the day, most golfers would would more than likely be willing to give up a tiny little bit of dif- distance if it means hitting a fairway. And I'm looking at four or five shots, not including the one I really drove through the zone and hit far, but but shut the head down a little bit more than the other th- uh, the other four. I, we've got a pretty small dispersion there, maybe maybe twenty to thirty feet, maybe forty feet left to right. Yeah, I would say twelve yards would be would be the dispersion, thirty five feet, maybe maybe. 
that's yeah. pretty darn good from center and it, it's a driver head like you said is it going to be the longest driver i don't know that that would be probably most likely a fitting idea i think it'll fit a, a large amount of golfers i the technology is sound I think that there's drivers out there that have sparked some interest. And certainly during range days, if they watch our other episodes, they're going to see that you hit a couple of drivers longer than this, a couple of drivers you hit shorter than this too. Um, I think it's definitely worth to be in the conversation though. And as a, all brands are not always in the conversation and that's kind of where it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree there. The hard, the hard thing for me is focusing on, value over what you're getting and and you have we we just talked before the video as we were preparing to discuss just general focus on what we wanted to uh to bring to the community we talked about like six or seven different technological elements that go into the head Um, yeah so on paper once again i mean this is competitive with with everything out there uh if they released this driver at 499 nobody would have bad an eye yeah so yeah, um, I'll I'll let it sit on my my five shot ball data for a second as we kind of work into our wrap up overall with the driver and what we saw. Uh, pretty strong consistency across the board. I obviously had a a couple that I really hit out there. Uh, like you said, fitting might might be able to crank me out there a little bit more with a shaft that was was more performing for me. But at the end of the day. Uh, these are numbers that are very playable and, and, and I think for those golfers out there looking for a new, for a new product to hit, especially a driver, I mean, tour edge is looking pretty good here. Yeah. When you break down efficiency, but the thing that struck, struck out to me that was, that made it hold up despite not being the longest we've hit in these episodes is the spin differential, uh, in the range of going low to high, unlike Dan, and everybody on the internet, I do miss the sweet spot from time to time. And knowing that seeing a spin differential of 300, when you're talking about a 15 to 20 millimeter difference in, in impact was what stood out to me. Uh, we, we have a number of people playing it, as Dan said, on the THP forum, and most of them really, really like what they're seeing right now. So that's enough for me to go give it a try. I, I, I'm going to be dead set honest and say I've only taken five swings total with this driver so i don't have a lot of personal feedback yet but i'm looking forward to it yeah we have uh the the one thing that sticks out to me beyond what you've already said josh is we have three drives that are almost identical in launch we have ball speeds that are within two or three mile an hour of each other despite being in different spots on the head i just keep continuously coming back to this driver is going to provide a very consistent experience for the guys who go out there and give it a chance yeah i agree do me a favor and point down so people know to like and uh, subscribe. <laughs> they never miss an episode of Range Days. So we they are don't think uh, I'm pointing just at Dan. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe over here. Oh, well, I guess you okay. can't comment over there, but okay. if you go straight down, you can comment. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this uh, this driver. If you've hit it yet, if you're interested in hitting it, we've obviously exposed a lot of the technological elements that go into making this head at a, at a really great price. And once again, the selection of blue is clearly my favorite so uh they've got me hooked there josh i'm gonna release a bomb real fast before we go off the air okay what do you got not literally for those monitoring youtube um we have something coming on the the hackers paradise forum now this video is archived you may find this well after the date we're doing this but it's called tee it up with tor edge and we're going to give away a trip to go play with somebody at tor edge when they're going to get one of these drivers so if I if I block the mic and look this way and start talking like I'm gonna get in and it's like my thing, can we just no? I'll, I'll tell you what you can go <laughs> and and be with them as they test the driver and go play golf with Tor Edge though. How about that? Uh, that's that's uh, yeah. I like the sound of that. Let's do it. Okay, so, so we're gonna do the commenting. We've already offered you some ideas on what you wanted to talk about with us. Uh, once again, www.thehackersparadise.com. There'll be an extended conversation over there, not just about this driver, but about range days as well. Uh, if you guys want to yes, take a chance to uh, join a great golf community um, and we'll be back for another episode here in uh, hopefully a week or so wrapping up, getting close to wrapping up range days drivers. Yeah. Josh. And we have a whole bunch of other stuff coming. 
All right, Josh. Hey, thanks. I don't know what that is yet, but we got (laughs) stuff coming. Yeah, Josh. Thanks for the time. Uh, Can't wait to uh, bring that next episode out.